join my Patreon at patreon.com slash bunnytails for the full uncut reactions. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome back. Time to watch some Star Trek today. Oh yes, we are in season two and we're watching an episode called The Immunity Syndrome. Well, I guess there's not much else to say except it is time to go where no bunny has gone before. Approaching Starbase 6 for a much needed period of rest and recreation. The crew has performed excellently, but is exhausted. And I too am looking forward to a nice period of rest. I'm sure we're going to get lots of rest this episode. Nothing's going to go wrong. Heavy interference, all I get is intrepid and what sounded like a sector coordinate. Intrepid is manned by Vulcans, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Enterprise oh. calling Starbase. What the heck? There's been a disturbance in the Vulcan force. Captain, the intrepid just died. And the 400 Vulcans aboard, all dead. Come on, Spock, let's go down to sick bay. Yeah, definitely uh, reminds me of the Alderaan incident, though this was, of course, long before that. We've lost all contact with solar system Gamma 7A, which the Intrepid was investigating. And we've just lost contact with the Intrepid. Order acknowledged, Kirk out. Well, there goes our R&R. &R. Everyone looks very upset. Gamma 7A system. It is dead. Dead? There are billions of inhabitants there. Dead? Hmm? Doctor, I'm quite all right. Well, all of my instruments seem to agree with you. If I can trust these crazy Vulcan readings. <laughs> I match them. Even I, a half Vulcan, could hear the death scream of 400 Vulcan minds crying out. But I know that not a person, not even the computers on board the Intrepid, knew what was killing them. Wow. You find it easier to understand the death of one than the death of a million. You speak about the objective hardness of the Vulcan heart. Yet how little room there seems to be in yours. Whoa. It might have rendered your history a bit less bloody. I mean, he definitely has a point. We just, if we mourned for every individual person, it, we would go crazy. Slow the warp three. Warp three, sir. We have to view like deaths like on a large scale like that in the abstract, and we have to try to distance ourselves from it because if we tried to think about each individual person, it's impossible. Like we would, it would be too hard. As in, like emotionally. Looks like a black hole or something. Looks like a hole in space. It lies directly in line with the course I calculate for the Intrepid and the Gamma 7A system. Yeah, it is worrisome. They got sucked in or something. Launch probe. Probe launched, sir. That's really unpleasant. The telemetry probe, sir. There's no signal from it. Oh! Lieutenant? Just dizzy. I'll be right. Is she fine? Well, uh, there's nothing organic. They all seem to be nervous, weak, and irritable. They say it happened suddenly like a balloon popping. Judging by the title of the episode, maybe some people have a mu more of an immunity to this whatever it is than others. Hold opposition, Mr. Cow. Immunity syndrome. No analysis due to insufficient information. Insufficient data is not sufficient, Mr. Spock. You're the science officer. You're supposed to have sufficient data all the time. I'm well aware of that, Captain. Do you want him to just start making some data up? Like, what do you want? Is it possible that this is what killed that solar system and the intrepid? Very possible. A whole solar system. Yes, sir. She's not looking too well, like... Transmission to Starfleet complete, sir. She needs to take a break. Penetration of the zone in one minute, seven seconds, sir. Oh no, not 
that again. Captain, the stars are gone. Whoa. Can you imagine? Then kindly tell me what happened to the stars. Unknown, Captain. Well, when stars die, they go into a supernova, right? But if we were far enough away from the, the each sun, would we see an explosion or would they just like wink out? Bones, how bad is it? Two thirds of the personnel are affected. Is there a needle in that? I wonder how they can just give all these people these shots without like changing needles. That sound was the turbulence caused by the penetration of a boundary layer, Captain, between where we were and where we are. Are you trying to be funny, Mr. Spock? It would never occur to me, Captain. <laughs> Them's the facts. But we seem to have entered a zone of energy which is incompatible with our living and mechanical processes. Recommendations? I have one. Let's turn around and get the hell out of here. I recommend survival. Mm-hmm. But can they leave if they wanted to? But he did get an order to... from Starfleet. Our orders do not say stay alive or retreat. Our mission is to investigate. We're getting sicker. We have no guarantees. But we have a good ship and the best crew in Starfleet. So do your jobs. Carry on. That's not a very motivating message. According to the life monitors, we're dying. We're all dying. So we are in inside this um, energy field that does not sustain life as we know it and our mechanical uh, things too. Trying to recalibrate and uh, we went into reverse. Reverse? But that was a forward lurch. How could that happen, a reverse thrust? I don't know, sir. We're being pulled toward the center of the zone of darkness. Oh, great. My watch, Spark. Unknown, Captain. I suggest you order Mr. Scott to give us reverse power. A lot of unknowns. He just gave us reverse power. We lurched forward. In that case, Captain, I would suggest we apply forward thrust. Launch it into forward. But go ahead. See what happens. That's doing it, sir. We're slowing down. But we're not stopping. Okay. So it's backwards day. As far as the power levels are concerned, everything is acting backwards. But the drain is continuing. It is logical to assume that something within this zone absorbs all forms of energy, whether mechanically or biologically produced. Oh. The analysis of the zone indicates it is a negative energy field, however illogical that may sound. We'll find out what it is, but we better get out of here ourselves. Channel all the impulse and warp power into one massive thrust forward. But I'll reserve some for the shields just in case we don't get out. The shields would be extraneous. It would only prolong our wait for death by a short period of time. That's great. Thanks, Spock. Captain, the Intrepid would have done all these things too, and yet they were destroyed. You just pointed out how illogical the situation is. I knew the ship was lost because I sensed it. What was it you sensed? Touch of death. What do you think they felt? Astonishment. Astonishment that they were dying? Because they couldn't logically explain it and therefore couldn't believe it, yet it was happening? Ready to try it when you are, sir. Do we have the power to pull it off, Scott? I uh, hope so, Captain. Who knows? There's so many unknowns. All we can do is try. All right, Scotty. Let's get on with it. Oh, they're going fast. Ooh, whoa! Scotty. It's no good, sir. The best we can do is to maintain thrust against the pull and hold our position. How long will the power hold out? Two hours, sir. It has found us. Hmm? What am I looking at here? Looks like some kind of sea creature with a mole. Launch pro. Red launch, sir. Readings coming in now, Captain. Length, approximately 11,000 miles. Width, varying from 2,000 to 3,000 miles. 
condition living. So that whole thing is the living entity? What's the big round thing in the center there? That is an amoeba. Do you mean to tell me that, that thing out there is a giant single-celled animal? Yes, it can reproduce, it can breathe, it can eat. I would speculate that this unknown life form is invading our galaxy like a virus. It just eat everything up. We've got to take a closer look at it. The closer we get, the faster our energy drains out. We're barely surviving. So that's a single cell that's like thousands of miles big. We could send one man in, pinpoint its vulnerable spots. You've got a volunteer. I've already done the preliminary work. It's a suicide mission. You have a martyr complex, doctor. I submit that it disqualifies you. Why is he so eager to do this? I think I intend to pass up the greatest living laboratories. Oh. I am more capable. Gentlemen, I am not taking volunteers. You don't think you're going? Well, I'm better qualified as a command pilot <laughs> than you are. Everybody wants to go. You are not a science specialist. I am, though. I'll decide. McCoy has the medical biological knowledge. Bach is better suited physically and emotionally to stand stress. Which of my friends do I condemn to death? Ooh, what a decision. He's got to make it quick, because they don't have much time. All levels are down 50% now, and still draining. Prepare the shuttlecraft for launching. Dr. McCoy will tell you what special equipment to put in it. Kirk out. That doesn't mean you're going. Right. Uh, I'll get a few things I need, Jim. Not you, Bones. I'm sorry, Mr. Spark. You're best qualified to go. He is sorry. Sorry to send his best friend into that. The shuttlecraft is ready. You're determined not to let me share in this, aren't you? It's not a competition, Doctor. Grant me my own kind of dignity. How can I grant you what I don't understand? Then employ one of your own superstitions. Wish me luck. Good luck. No? Oh, thought he was going to call after him. Good luck. Good luck, Spock. There it is. <laughs> okay. He, he just, his pride won't allow him to say it out loud, huh? These two. <laughs> They're so silly sometimes. Oh, man. Definitely Spock was, I think, the choice to go. Our drain is enormous and growing worse. Brace yourselves. The area of penetration will no doubt be sensitive. Man, this is like some magic school bus stuff going on here. Tiny, tiny little ship or bus going into the something huge. A huge living thing. I am on damage, Captain. Oh, and Dr. McCoy, you would not have survived it. I want to bet. <laughs> want to bet? <laughs> Establishing course toward what appears to be the nucleus. Are those knives? <laughs> Changes indicate the organism has stored sufficient energy for a reproductive process to commence. Oh, well, well, you don't need more of those things. Bob, you read me. How is he going to get back out of there? I am losing voice contact. I will transmit internal coordinates of chromosome bodies. Contact loss, sir. He's alive! What? He's kicked it on the side to let us know. How do you know? Okay, I'll we'll go with that. I'll believe you. Well, all I know is that soon there'll be two, four, eight more. We must destroy that organism. Captain, the pull from that organism is increasing. How much time do we have? No more than an hour now, sir. I always get so nervous when their lives are in danger, even though I know that they're going to survive. This is Spock. Spock. I'm slowly losing life support. We need sufficient charge of... ...destroy the organism. Tell Dr. McCoy. Sufficient charge of what? He should have wished me luck. He did. Oh. <laughs> Am I so sentimental that I just have to keep believing that he's still alive out there in that mass of protoplasm? What is that thing out there, Bones? It's like a virus invading the body of our galaxy. 
It's 11,000 miles long. And it's one cell. Mm -hmm. When it grows into millions, we'll be the virus invading its body. Here we are, antibodies of our own galaxy, attacking an invading germ. Be ironic indeed if that were our sole destiny, wouldn't it? <gasps> antibodies. Antibodies? I have no idea what his idea is. What would happen if you diverted all remaining power to the shields? We'd be sucked into that thing like being caught in the wind tunnel, sir. Exactly. All hands, this is the captain. We're going to enter the body of the organism. So he's purposefully going in. But why? What's he going to do? Cutting thrust to zero. No. This thing is not going to be happy. Ooh. Where's Spock? Where's he at? We're through, sir. We have no power for the phasers. Would probably like phasers. It eats power. Well, then what the devil... Begging your pardon, sir. What are we doing? This thing has a negative energy charge. Everything seems to work in reverse. We'll use antimatter. Oh. Everything backwards. Why didn't I think of it? Point blank range. We must be exactly on target. Because we won't have a second chance. Personal log. I wish it known that I bequeath my highest commendation and testimonial to the captain, officers, and crew of the Enterprise, the finest starship in the fleet. If we should fail in our attempt to destroy it, I wish to record my recommendations for the following personnel. This is a very Lieutenant Commander emotional Leonard episode. McCoy, Lieutenant Commander Montgomery Scott. Chekhov, Cowell, Uhura. And my highest commendation for Commander Spock, who gave his life in the performance of his duty. Oh. Probe launched, sir. It is lodged in a nucleus near the chromosome bodies. Back us out the way we came in. What about Spock? How's he gonna get back? Captain, metallic substance outside the ship. Spock. Get him. You read me, Spock, you read me. Come in, Spock. Spock! Oh, man. You gotta get a tractor so beam. So intense. Captain, we don't have enough time to do it. I'm well aware of that, Mr. Scott. Get two tractor beams on that shuttlecraft. I saw them. I recommend you abandon the attempt. Nope. Shut up, Spock. We're rescuing you. <laughs> Why, thank you, Captain <laughs> McCoy. <laughs> oh, God. I love episodes like this. Power levels are dead, sir. You may have just written our epitaph, Mr. Scott. Okay. So the... Antimatter bomb has gone off, I assume. Activate main viewing screen. It's it's gone. Completely vaporized. Anti-vaporized. The organism is destroyed, sir. Shuttle grabbed. I don't know how, sir, but it's still with us. Yes! Request permission to come aboard. <laughs> Spock, you're alive. Obviously, Captain. <laughs> Don't be so smart, Spock. You botched the acetylcholine test. Later, later, later. <laughs> Bring the shuttlecraft aboard, uh, Mr. Scott. Aye, sir. I feel like... Uh, Bones feels like the way I feel, but he's a lot better at keeping it together. <laughs> I'm still looking forward to a nice period of rest and relaxation on some lovely planet oh don't end there oh come on i wanted to see the reunion on the ship i love those <laughs> Whew. okay that was a very like gripping the edge of your seat kind of episode and the biggest biggest commendations from me to 
all the cast for their amazing acting, especially Bones and Kirk in this one and Spock too, but I really, really liked the emotional performance of the prior two, uh, most notably McCoy. I think the line of the uh, Spock, you botched the acetylcholine test where he's like, it started out as like anger. Obviously he's not angry, but he just has like all this emotion and how else can he deal with Spock without feeling embarrassed than other than to just yell at him. He couldn't even tell him good luck out loud. He had to say it after Spock had already entered the shuttlecraft and the doors were closed under his breath. Good luck. So stubborn that one, but it started with like this just uh, this emotional, like forceful kind of ragey. I'm yelling at you for messing up the test or botching the thing. Um, and then it transformed into like, he's going to cry because he's so happy. And I thought it was really well done. Any episode where we have like this back and forth between Spock and McCoy. Bones is trying to be so hard. Spock is trying to maintain his logical self. They have these tough exterior facades, but deep down they love each other like dearly, like brothers. And as far as the organism goes, I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. A giant single cell organism that will eventually, when it gets enough fuel or sustenance, it will begin to reproduce and it can just take out an entire system in the blink of an eye. It feeds on matter, which we generally use to harm something. It's harmed by antimatter, so very opposite to what we are accustomed to. Thrust forward sends us back. Reverse power sends us forward. It's just all backwards. I think Bones might have a bit of an inferiority complex when it comes to Spock. That's why he's always trying to act tough. He doesn't let his guard down around him. He's always trying to get at him. I'm sure his pride was hurt when Kirk picked Spock to go into the shuttlecraft saying that he was the most qualified one. And I was surprised that McCoy volunteered to go because I feel like they kind of knew that this was most likely a one-way trip. And I understand that he wanted to like study an organism that he would never have a chance to study ever again. And is something that's completely new, novel to them. But then he would have died immediately after. But I suppose with his knowledge of biology and organisms and living matter, he felt like he would be the best suited to do this and to save his friends on the Enterprise. And being the one that was held back definitely would be really tough for him. Feeling very helpless. And what a tough position for him to be in. Volunteers for this very dangerous suicide mission which he is always very against. He said, I suggest survival. Like that's always at the forefront of him. Survive, save everybody. Always at the front of his mind. I mean, he is a doctor. He saves people's lives. He's a healer. Maybe he felt as the one whose job is to keep everybody alive, to be the one to go in there and get the proper data and give the information back to relate to the Enterprise so that they could use it to somehow destroy the organism, stay alive. And I guess with Spock down there and him on the Enterprise, just with nothing to do except wait with bated breath to see what was going to happen to Spock, it would be akin to a doctor whose patient is on the other side of a locked door and who is flatlining and not being able to do anything about it. I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Um, the episode, I think it started a little bit slow, but it definitely picked up and I feel like it might be uh, one of my top ones by the end of all of this season two. We'll see, but it definitely really kicked up at the end and had a really amazing payoff. 
and I hope for more episodes like this one. So I will await to hear from you guys in the comments on what you're thinking about this episode, and I will see you guys in the next week's episode as well. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.